In this video, we're going to look at the Flipper Zero, what it is and what it is not. I'm going to talk about different things like the price, what it's really good at and what it's really bad at. So the question is, do you need to invest your hard-earned money into Flipper Zero or are you better off buying just some specialized tools to get the job done? So let's dive in and find out what the Flipper Zero action is all about. Now, I'm on the official website right now, and the text is, what is Flipper Zero? Now, the Flipper Zero is your cyber body, as it's all about. This is the tech you probably would like to buy if you are new into the whole area of cybersecurity and you are a beginner. Well, if you have some core experience, you might even think about specialized tools. But I'm going to get to that in the end of the video, so make sure to see the whole video to get all the points that I'm hoping for you to understand whether you need to buy the Flipper Zero or don't need to buy the Flipper Zero. Scrolling down a bit here, we're going to see that the Flipper Zero offers a small display with a easy-to-use interface with one button and a wheel going back and forth. So we can choose from the screen that is 1.4 um, inches wide. All right, so the Flipper Zero also uh, gives us a GPIO pin uh, input possibility that enables us to extend its functionality. So for example, Flipper Zero doesn't come with Wi-Fi capabilities, so we need to buy something called the Wi-Fi board, and that's also gonna cost you extra money just to get that. Now, I would like to say that, you know, even though that the Wi-Fi board does actually cost some extra money if you're gonna buy the official one, you could go to the unofficial channels like AliExpress or some other website that sell the boards off the chart so you can buy them a lot cheaper and then you just need to burn on some software on them to actually make them usable. So you can save a lot of money if you want to go ahead and buy the boards, the DPIO pin extension boards that are not official. It also comes with a infrared transceiver um, enabling you to intercept and send infrared signals mostly used in remote controls for TVs, for things you can control. It could be loudspeakers and so on. Got a very limited purpose, but anyways, it's there for you. It's also got the sub one gigahertz transceiver and sender. So it's uh, both receiving and sending. And with that, you can intercept signals like, you know, a car fob key, you press on it, intercept stuff like people turning on and off their heater or cooler, whatever they have. It could also be a fence. It could be like IoT sensors, garage doors, and so on. So there are many things you can intercept with a Flipper Zero, and you can send the signal again. Now, if there's not any kind of security built into that sending signal or receiving it, well, then you can basically just replay it. And this is one of the specialities behind Flipper Zero because it's really easy to use. Uh, keep in mind that the sub one gigahertz antenna is not the biggest one on the Flipper Zero. So you need to be kind of close to the signal in order to actually intercept it. Now, if you are a lot far away, you could probably buy an extension board with an even bigger antenna that's going to extend that range of signal for you. So the functionality be will become a bit more usable, you could say. You can also go ahead and read the RFID small cards or the small bricks, whatever you call them, um, basically used to open doors or open a fence, something like that. It does require that you have the actual physical key fob, uh, well, the RFID, the RFID tag in your hand uh, or someone, you know, if kind enough to let read, you can read it. Um, the thing about reading it from a distance does not really work that way. And if you want to read it from a distance, the Flipper Zero is not going to call it for you because it's just not powerful enough. Also, it takes uh, a bit of power to read something from a distance. So actually just one meter is a lot, not what the actual RFID tag is made for. It is made for a close vicinity, I would say almost like touching. So you would need a physical connection to it up against the Flipper Zero, just like the card. It also got the NFC reading and sending possibilities, um, near field communication that also enables you to read the small NFC cards. Um, again, the same kind of issues here goes on. People talk about 
whether the flipper suit can read or not read an actual um, paying card. It can, I would like to say, but it cannot read the sequel, the secret three digits, which is not something you can get out of the card that easily. So in most occasions, not going to really kind of work for you. It also got the Bluetooth capabilities. Well, basically, um, most of the things in Bluetooth is about the bleed attack, the bleed spam, I'm going to call it. So you can, for example, make iPhones have this pop up, or you're going to connect your AirPods or whatever, also for you know, Windows and other operating systems. And it can be quite annoying. So basically, rendering the phone inoperable in some cases. Um, so, but it does require you to be in the actual vicinity and in the distance to make this work because it's not that powerful of a device. Again, it's more like a novelty device. It got a lot of things going on. Um, but again, it's a functionality. It's something you can try and use and it's not really the, the best you could say. The infrared transceiver, we already talked about it again, it's kind of the same power as the remote control. I would say it's probably one to one power, but remote control is specialized to send infrared signals. And you could essentially turn things up uh, on and off that, you know, use that, um, kind of infrared receiver, uh, the flipper zero, depending on which kind of operating system you install on it or the firmware, you can call it, uh, comes with a different variety of different pre-programmed, uh, universal signals, you could say for turning on and off mostly, uh, you can also find some of them with brands for different kinds of TVs and so on. So if you love your remote control, you could essentially control your own TV to a certain degree, but it's not the same as a remote. It's more like a certain kind of functionality. Imagine that you only have one button to use in the flipper zero, clicking up and down. So that's gonna, you know, make the functionality a bit more, we can call it like limited, I would like to say. You can also insert a micro SD card so you can store stuff on it, like apps and data, which is of course great. You could say the Flipper Zero also got like a, it's like a tool for hardware exploration. There's so many different kinds of projects for it. Most of them are on the, you know, I would call it like low end. So you could, for example, also play games on it, like a small game extension, um, thing for, I don't know exactly who used that, but it's possible I mean, say games. <laughs> It's not going to be like games as you probably think about it. It's like very limited, you know, only fun one time or two times, and then it's like ah, pretty boring. So yeah. Okay. So the Flipper Zero itself, um, also got this, um, they got to call it touch memory. I guess I can show what that is. It's a, uh, built-in wire connector to read iPod and contact keys. So that's also great. Um, I'd like to say that, yeah, let's just look at the actual what's inside. Well, it's just a small board, you know, with the different kind of, you know, things like a SD card slot, a battery antenna, an infrared transceiver, uh, the I button, um, low power MCU and sub one gigahertz antenna and a DPIO reader. And so with some clever software and so on, they developed this flipper zero to make it a somewhat, you know, I would call it a beginner friendly approach to doing small things. Um, I'm going to get back to what I would like to mean with that. So the tech spec it's inside of it can be viewed right here. And even though that it does seem like a lot, um, I'm going to talk about specialized tools just a moment after this. And just to view the very last one here, um, I'm probably gonna, you know, extend the Flipper Zero a bit. Uh, I don't know if they actually create a new model. I don't know. I want to say that, yeah, we have the model left right here. I want to say that, um, there is something called the Flipper One coming. I don't know exactly when. It is not to replace the Flipper Zero, but it's more like a a new device made for someone that wants a bit more out of it, that actually have a real operating system tied to it that can be used as a portable computer and so on. And then would of course need an external power source to, to, to run just for some time, but it is how it is. So let's dive into the next part, which is specialized tools. 
So the flipper zero itself can do many different kinds of things. This is also why it's so popular because it got a lot of different kinds of functionalities just at your hand with one button. So talk about specialized tools. I'm going to pick a few of them to talk about. That is probably the most important ones. The first one here is called the sub one gigahertz wireless test tool. You can go ahead and buy one here. Um, of course the price can be fine differently. This one costs $99. You can also get different kind of ones, and then you can basically put on a small antenna. There's going to be a longer antenna, as you can see, it can become pretty long. Um, and with these kind of things, it's also a USB, you know, you can just connect to your computer. You can basically have a normal laptop running some Linux distribution, like Linux Kali, for example, uh, or Kali, I hope going to pronounce that. And you can have your own software, write it to yourself, you know, and you can even download different kind of firmwares. I know. Flipper Zero fans probably going to say you do the same Flipper Zero, but that's not true. If you have your own computer, you have a lot more power and you have your, a lot more freedom. You're not, you know, bound to the Flipper Zero's power and processes, like, which is really bad. So this is, of course, one of the things you can go ahead and buy. Also, the Proxmark card readers. I'm sorry, this is in Danish, actually, but, you know, you can go ahead and buy different kind of card readers. You know, this is actually not the... the is probably around, I don't know, how much is this in, in USD? So you can probably, I'm going to calculate that uh, USD. It's around 50 to 60 USD, this unit cost. So it's not really the most expensive one. And there are many different kind of, you know, card you can go ahead and buy the Proxmark, the, the, uh, the, the, I can't remember all the names, but there are different kind of card you can go ahead and read that are more specialized with more powerful tools, a lot more powerful processor and software connected to it with a real computer. So if you want real hardware doing a job, you know, if you zero cannot, you know, compete with that, but that is the difference between specialized hardware. Also for the Wi-Fi capabilities of the flipper zero, you know, usually you go ahead and recommend the alpha cards, um, for a computer and you can buy different kind of them that the both support like 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz and six gigahertz, for example. Which is of course one unit in everything. This one is, uh, as I see it, I think it's only 2.4 gigahertz. It's just one I found for this place purposes. Um, so, so basically this kind of, you know, alpha cards are a lot more powerful compared to the Flipper Zero. And if you have a real computer at your hand, or you can basically just have a Raspberry Pi, which is a lot more powerful, Raspberry Pi 5, for example with a battery and you connect that and put it in your bag and then you just do some remote desktop to it from your tablet, for example, then you have a lot better interface you can control your Raspberry Pi from, and it's going to create like a lot better, a lot more powerful computer to do with different kind of Wi-Fi hacks with. Uh, this is another card reader. It's called the Proxmark, Proxmark 3. Uh, another one you can go ahead and use to clone the RFID, RFID tags and so on card readers, readers, card chip clone. Uh, it's uh, around $25. That's one I think it is. So it's not the most expensive one. Uh, of course, this is one from AliExpress. So you're going to be careful when buying off the charts. Another one here is also AliExpress. It's just a normal alpha card. This is one I actually own this one I think it is. And this is only 2.4 gigahertz, I think. But then again, you can see that the price is pretty low. It's around $30, something like that, $30, $40. And you can get pretty far with these kind of cards with one antenna. Sometimes they actually come with a directional and also an omnidirectional antenna, which is the one that is connected to right now. So it's going to be in all directions. Where directional, you can point it more towards, towards the target you're going to try and do some penetration testing on. And then it will be, the signal will be a lot better. The last one here is called the crazy radio. And especially for those of you that think about, well, how can I do the wireless hacking and controlling, you know, wireless mice and wireless keyboards? This is one of the things you can go ahead and use for that. The Flipper 2 also come with the same kind of functionality, but it kind of is limited in a certain way, you know, specialized hardware is always going to get the trick done better, faster, and more powerful, more functionality, more flexibility. But then again, you know, this video is, is much more about, is Flipper 2 actually worth it, the money? And I think uh, we're going to go ahead and talk about that right now. 
the final verdict of flip a zero, is it worth your hard earned money and so on, you know, let's, let's look at it. Now it costed 229 euros right now. Um, euros and dollars is not the same. Euros is worth more. So it's even more dollars than 229. The full functionality of Flipper Zero will unlock when you get the Wi-Fi development board, which is going to cost you another 42 euros. Then you could say, okay, you need other things that you cannot buy from the official website. The things you're going to buy from other places, probably going to be AliExpress. It's going to be the, the antennas for the sub gigahertz, um, attacks for wireless mice and keyboards. Uh, probably going to cost you another $50 or something like that, even with shipping. So what you're going to look at is around $300 in total expenses, $300, $350 in total expenses. I would like to say that probably more like $350 in total expenses to get the full functionality of Flipper Zero. And the Flipper Zero is kind of like a novelty tool. You know, it's not the best tool. It's like a beginner's, beginner's device, a thing you can do some things a little bad. It's not the best device for you if you want specialized functionality. It is probably the better device for you if you're new. You just want something you can click on with a button, but you will not hack big things with it. All the videos you've seen online with how you can unlock this and that or get access to this and that using the Flipper Zero is something that is not really possible. Of course, if you have an actual key, why would you need to read it in order to use the Flipper Zero that way? If you already have the key, you have it. Why use the Flipper Zero then, right? So if you need to steal the key and read it, maybe it will work. Depending on which kind of functionality and encryption you're using the key, I'm going to call, talk about the key fobs here, the cards. Talking about stealing credit cards and stuff like that, it, it is not that easy. You need actual physical contact with it. Now, how many kind of did you do that? Um, specialized tools can have a bit more distance, but again, it's going to be a lot more difficulty to think. So what you really look into if you're going to buy a Clipper Zero is something that many people talk about is to open Tesla charges. You can do, definitely do that. You can probably try and turn on off a TV here and there. That is something you can also do. Different kind of Wi-Fi attacks. Yeah, but it's not the best device for it. It lacks power. It's a small screen. You don't have a lot of functionality. You're locked to something. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You have no way of finding out why. But if you want to play around with this and you're new to hacking, I'm kind of not really thinking it's the best hacker device. So I would say, would you like to buy it? You know, give it a go, you know, be my guest. Um, you would get a lot more bang for your box with specialized tools and you would learn a lot more if you're going to sit down and do some research. But if you want to do something fast and easy, quick and dirty and Sometimes it works, most of the time it doesn't. Uh, go ahead and buy the Flipper Zero. But will you get a lot of success with it? Will you have fun? I guess it'll be fun for you to try the things. Um, but there are other alternatives getting out soon that are going to be a lot more powerful than the Flipper Zero and will offer you more functionality for less money. And you can just go ahead and watch my YouTube channel. You will find out exactly what I'm talking about. So the final word for me is going to be maybe, maybe you need to buy the Flipper Zero if you think it's a fun thing. If you're a researcher into cybersecurity, you know, you don't need this kind of thing. It is just a toy. Um, I've said it before, I'm going to say it again. It's not the best device out there. I think it's fun. It's more like a toy to me. Something you can play around with, you know, it doesn't cause a lot of chaos and havoc. Some countries banned it because of dumb politicians. I basically want to say it this way, really dumb politicians. So with this video, I'm going to end up saying like, I hope you learned something. And basically, you know, the Flipper Zero, is it worth your money? Probably not. Probably not. <laughs>